Hey y'all, Emily here from fairairmusic.com and today I've got something really cool to share with all of you who might be thinking about putting out some brand new music. Whether that's a single, an EP, or a full-length album that you want to record, mix, master, and release for all the world to hear. But first, you gotta finish writing those songs. So in this video, I wanna share with you five tips to finish writing a song in hopes that this will help you along in your musical journey. And tip number one, try swapping your song sections around. I know when I start writing a song, I've got all these great lines going and it's already getting stuck in my head, sounding good with all the chords and then a wall. Where do I take it from here? I've got solid words rhyming in all the cool spots, but I just can't come up with anything to attach it to. This is one of my biggest obstacles in writing songs, and I'm sure a lot of you have found yourself in the same situation. So how do we push through this? How do we keep the vibe of the song going? Well, try swapping that part that you really like for a different section of the song, because the reason that you might be in love with that part is because it's the hook, it's the chorus. You know, I think a lot of times when we get an idea and we start to write it down, we naturally want to do this beginning to end or left to right style writing, like we're used to reading something or listen to. But it just might not be the best practice for songwriting. For example, try the Loretta Lynn approach to songwriting. You get your main conclusion with the hook or chorus down, or you may have more than one catchy part. Then go back and start adding the story that gets you there. Here's Jack White to explain this just a little bit better. She writes backwards. She sort of writes with a double chorus. There's like two choruses and she she starts sort of with the second one, comes back and writes this, the first part of the chorus and then goes back and starts writing the verses and the story to get to it. Tip number two, picture the music video. If you're stuck on a part of a song and you either don't know where the rest of the story is gonna go or maybe you have a couple of ideas but you're having a hard time choosing which one. When this happens, try imagining how the music video will play out. What storyline would be the most impactful or the most relatable? In some cases, what would be the most unique outcome of the song's story? Because songs are basically mini stories. And as music listeners, we kind of naturally picture short film in our mind or connecting certain images when we listen to a song. So it would only make sense to take that into consideration when choosing the direction of the song. And by taking just a little bit of time to picture what this looks like in your mind can really help push the song into completion. Another practice that I have found to be helpful is kind of just reversing this process. So after watching a movie or an episode of something, write in song or even poem form what you've just seen. This is a great exercise that allows you to keep writing and not get used to any sort of creative block because you already know how the story turns out. And I promise you this exercise will help you become a better writer and it will become a lot easier to finish your songs. Tip number three, the circle of fifths. Now, a lot of you might already be familiar with what the circle of fifths are, so we're not going to deep dive into some music theory lesson. But if you're not familiar with it, I want you to go ahead and print you out a copy or keep one downloaded on your computer because it is a great tool to reference back to when trying to songwrite. Now, I still have my copy here. This is the same exact one that I had in my music theory classes when I was getting a degree in music production. And I have kept it with me ever since because I refer back to this all the time when I am writing songs. And I'm gonna tell you how you can use this to finish your songs. Now I'm gonna jump on the computer here. So I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I've got basically the same exact copy of the one that I have here. You can find these, I mean, there's so many of these online, but what I do recommend is finding one that of course has all of the standard circle of fifth things on here. So around the outer realm of this circle are your major chords. So you've got all of them there. And then on the inner circle here is all of your minor chords. It also is important to be able to see how many sharps and flats go with each of these. 
So this is pretty good. And these are also on the exact lines and spacings that they are supposed to be on. And if you remember back in, I don't know, second grade, when you first had your music class, you learned how to count each of these lines and memorize which letter that the sharps and flats go to. So a little nostalgia here. Every good boy does fine. So for the key of G, we have a sharp on F. And just like D here, we've got the middle spacing, which spelled out face. So F A C E. So we have two sharps in the key of D and we've got one on C and F. So how can we take this to help us finish writing our songs? So we've got our major scale here, and yes, there are other ones, but everything that I'm gonna say about this one will apply to all the other ones. The first thing that we need to know is what key we're in, and that's gonna be our one. So for example, let's be in the key of G. So the next chord that we have here is going to be A. Why A? Because we only have seven spaces. And we're gonna refer back once again to our elementary school lessons, and we're going to think about our alphabet. So if G is the last letter that I can go up to in music, I'm gonna have to go back to the first one and that is A. So now from A, we will go B, C, D. You see what's going on here? E and F. So what do we know about this? Well, these little or lowercase Roman numerals indicates that that chord is a minor. So back to our circle of fifths, we know that the key of G has a sharp. It has one sharp, and that is the F. So we're going to go like this. And just to let you know, this last, this seven chord here is a diminish. And that's, you'll know that by this little, little circle here to the, to the right of that. So this would be an F sharp diminished. So now we know everything that we're playing. So if I've got a song and I'm playing a G and I'm playing an E minor and I'm playing those two chords back together and it's got a nice groove and I'm, I'm starting to come up with some words on that. Maybe, it, maybe it's the hook, maybe it's the first verse, I don't know, but it's really sounding good. Some words are coming to me, but then where do I go from here? I don't know what's gonna sound right. What's gonna work? This is going to tell you what will work because here's all the chords in that key that you're playing in. So right now you're playing the one and you're playing the six. You're playing the G and the E minor. But then maybe you're stuck. Maybe you don't know where to go next. So what can we do? We've got a lot of options here. We can go to A minor, we can go to B minor, C, D, we've got F sharp here. So this is something that's really cool to keep handy, refer back to. I know a lot of people memorize it, but I just always wanna know, you know, exactly what chords I can use. And another great thing about this is, is that if you did need to change the key, if you're like, you know what, um, I, I kind of like like the groove and the vibe of that, but I don't know if these chords are going to be exactly what I need. Well, all you have to do is just change the key that you're in. So we could move on to a C, which C would be very simple because C does not have any sharps or flats. So what you would do, I'll just go down here, is go from C, D. So we would do a D minor. This would be another E minor. We've got F major, G major, and then we repeat back to our A minor. And then instead of any sort of, of flat here, we are going to have a B diminish. The circle of fist is just can be really helpful when you have just a block of, of where to take the song if you just got a section done and you need to finish it. And when you know which chords you can grab from, this will also help you know where to place them. Let's say you do have a lot of the lyrics done and you just don't know what chords to play with it. Well, since we're talking about the key of G, I wanna show you an example. This is the dance in the style of Garth Brooks. And I just wanna show you how he's using these chords or how the original songwriter was using these chords. So 
when we look at words such as a memory, the dance, stars, these are major chords that are brighter in texture, I, I would say, if, if, I'm just, if I'm describing how they sound. They sound pleasant, they, you know, they sound uplifting. But when you go down here where it says you'd ever say goodbye, that starts with an E minor because saying goodbye brings us back down a little bit. It makes us want to feel that emotion. And the same thing with the B minor here. And now, because that's an emphasis, so we're playing that C major. I'm glad I didn't know we're still there. We're still being dynamic, I guess. How it all would end. So we're back down to a minor chord. So I just think that, you know, this is a good example of where you can take those chords along with the emotion of the lyrics that can help you to finish any song that you might need music to. Tip number four, listen to a lot of music. Now I know this may sound simple enough, but if we aren't listening to music, it's gonna be really hard to create it, especially when you're trying to compete with mainstream commercial releases or maybe you're aiming for that publishing deal. Gotta have completed songs for that and you actually gotta have a lot of them. So something that I like to do is give myself at least 30 minutes to an hour every day to listen to music. And when I say listen to music, I don't just mean turn it on and go do something else. You have to be a little bit conscious of what's going on. I like to treat this more as an exercise. I really like to go through my recommendations of what's new. It doesn't always have to be new, but it's new to me. Now, of course, there's a ton of music streaming options out there. Just go with the one that really curates a good playlist and, and recommendations for you. So for me, mine's given me options from new music all the way back to the 60s because it's the stuff that I listen to and it's kind of the style that I like to write in. And having that mixture of old and new really helps spark some cool and unique ideas. While I'm doing this, another exercise that I like to do is listen for trends, common lyrical and melodic themes, BPM, instrumentation. And what this does is that it will help you come up with lyrics and melodies on the fly, which can really impress your co-writers. And speaking of co-writers, our final tip in helping you finish writing your songs, get you a co-writer. Bouncing ideas off of each other can be such an amazing experience. The whole, hey, what do you think of this? Or, what do you got? You may have a line or an idea that you've been holding on to for years that you've never been able to complete and you tell it to your co-writer and bam, they've just helped you finish your song. They can come up with something that you just couldn't see in that angle. And then it really blows your mind. We could spend an entire video on the benefits and how to navigate around in that realm of the music business. But the important thing is that having someone else to interact with and receiving that immediate feedback on a line or a chorus can be very rewarding. And if you start to write some great songs, word gets out and the networking in that songwriting community gets around and you kind of move up that ladder to better and better co-writing partners. The unfortunate news is that co-writing isn't always available, especially if you're just starting to get into songwriting and you just, you don't know anyone else or there isn't anyone else. Maybe you're in an area that's just not very musical or you don't know anyone that takes it seriously enough. Sharing your song ideas and your writings can be very personal and intimidating. And that's okay because we are now in the world of AI and you can have a co-writer on demand anytime you want. Now, I know there's gonna be some haters out there on this topic, but I don't care. It's here now, it's not going away. And if this is something that we can use as a tool to get better, then why not? And some people might consider it cheating, but I don't because you still have to navigate it enough and give it specific ideas and direction that if you didn't, you wouldn't be getting any sort of half decent results. So again, not a replacement, but it's a tool and a co-writer stand-in. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Now, I like to use Notion. I know a lot of people use the chat GPT, I believe is what it's called. I don't really like it that much. So I am a big Notion user. And since Notion came out with Notion AI, I just like to stick with that. So what do we do? Let's ask AI to write. 
Now, I'll show you, if you were to ask it to write a pop song, it's going to just tell you how to write a pop song. So this isn't some sort of magic wand that you can, you know, just start asking it to write you a bunch of songs. Let's just, let's just go a, just a tad bit more specific, right? So write a pop song titled, uh, Burning Bridges, right? That sounds cool. So now at least we get a structure. So it's telling me that this is, this is basically how a pop song would be structured, or at least the majority of them. So we can go through some of these. Uh, it's not bad. Burning bridges, burning bridges. We can't go back to what we had. Burning bridges, burning bridges. We've got to move on from the past. Um, and okay, so what is this? It, there's, it's, it's a little vague, right? And this is supposed to be our chorus. There's not much going on. Um, our, the bridge here, our love was like a wildfire. That's kind of cool, but now it's all burnt out. We've got to start anew and find out what love's about. So it's very, you know, sort of elementary, right? It's, it's not advanced writing or anything like that. So what we can do is maybe go to the course here, ask AI, let's improve the writing first. Okay, so this is as good as it thinks that it can get, right? It hasn't changed it. So we know that that's, that's, they're not going to improve that if we say, if we just say improve it. So what I want to do is like take this and I don't know, maybe make, make it more haunting. All right, so that's cool. So I like this, this part, right? And so you just keep going. Like, then you can say, you know, just add to this. And like, I want it, I want it to go into the direction of maybe like moving on, uh, having some doubts, whatever, you know, just something like that. Something, you know, that you can keep going you know, and to sum this all up, I, I can take this and then ask it to write a chorus. And then this is what I've got. I've changed a couple of things here. I, I, I you know, I want to expand on this. This is, is it long enough? I don't think for me to finish it. And so you can kind of like get your ideas here. This is also where you can come up with, you know, your melodic structure and everything like that. And, and just, you know, just, just the whole song structure of it. It's, you know, you're bouncing ideas off of each other just like you would a co-writer in person. So there you go, friends. I hope that these tips can help you finish those songs that have been stuck in your notebook for far too long and get them to a completed production. If you do have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below or you can email me at emily at fairairmusic.com. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching.